Well, hello, my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? What do you say? Let's have a build video. Huh? Yeah, I'm going to build a model right here in this video. We've all taken a good look at it, and over at Andy's, I hope you took a look at this kit. We opened it up. The new Salvino's JR models, 2022 NASCAR Camaro, the next gen. All new kit. I'm looking forward to putting this thing together, and we're going to have a good time with it. I just wanted to cover a few bases with you because I'm doing this just like remember way back when and if you haven't watched it you should go check it out that video right there that was when I got the opportunity to get a hold of uh, an early pre-production kit of the Tamiya Mustang GT4 that was a lot of fun and I know some people got angry because I built it so unpainted Okay, we're under some times restraints. So, I'm going to be doing the same thing with this one. I'm just letting you know. As we showed in the video before that uh, we opened up the kit over on Andy's channel. Again, go take a look at this right here over at Andy's channel. And this is direct from Salvino's JR. They designed these kits that if you choose to buy this kit and not paint it, because they are actually going after new people not in the hobby there at the races. This was something that NASCAR wanted. It was something that Salvino's wanted to do. This is a kit to bring new people into the hobby, all the new NASCAR fans. And they wanted to have a kit that you could easily build without painting. So we're going to build it that way and show you how nice it's going to turn out. The one thing that I'm going to do is if you've seen in this video right here, when I put the wraps over the bare plastic on that charger body from Silvino's JR, I just cleared it with good old Tamiya TS-13. I bought myself a brand new can, fresh, not even opened yet. I'm shoot this entire thing on this car. I think what I want to do is I'm going to be putting layers of clear on it before I add the different layers of decals. And we have about two different sets of decals, three different sets of decals, but... There's going to be about two layers of decals. One that's going to be body color and the other one that's going to be all the race livery. So that's what we want to do with this build. They did everything like the chassis and the and the different components that are supposed to be like a composite material. They did all those trees in kind of a very dark gray. Almost it, pretty much black but looks like a very very dark gray. Really cool color. And all the chassis frame... That, those parts that are white on the car were molded in white. And of course the body is molded in the Napa blue. Everything is kind of color coordinated to where it's supposed to be. And we're going to do a little touching up here and there. and Just to liven it up a bit with some detail painting. Um, but I am not going to spray any paint on this. I'm putting that right out there. So if that makes you upset, I uh, don't know what to tell you. You'll have to go find another build, build video where they're painting it all. But that build video probably won't be out yet because I want to get this one out quick and show you. I got other plans to do other ones. Like, originally I was thinking about doing, remember I showed you this, and I asked everybody, what do you think I bought these, these paints for? Yes, I do want to do one of these cars as a what-if Cole Trickle City Chevrolet. Remember the old City Chevrolet Lumina, one of my favorite cars in NASCAR? I want to do one of these Camaros as a City Chevrolet. But that's for another time. I was originally going to do it with this one, but I just thought, you know what? we got to build this baby right out of the box. So I'm going to shut up now, and we're going to get on in the process of building this model. So let's, let's start building it, okay? And let's have a good time with it. Here we go. All right, so we're already kicking in gear, and I've already taken off all the parts I need, well, most of the parts I need, for the first step, which is building the engine. We're going to be putting this together. I'm going to just do a little bit of detail painting. We're going to get this all together. Just a little bit of cleanup is needed. Typical stuff with model building. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're, we're moving. It's it started. This build has started. So um, I just, everything came off the trees real well. The way they're connected, they're a little loose. Some of the stuff falls off, but you know what? I kind of like it. They really cut away from the uh, um, the trees really well, and not too bad a scarring or anything. Looks really good. Uh, well, take a look at that uh, throttle body injection there, and there's all the injection, uh, the fuel injection. This right here, it would be your uh, looks like a fuel rail, but. Um, 
not that familiar because this is your fuel. That's going to your injectors right there. That kind of goes underneath there in between the, uh, the valley cover of the engine block and this intake here. Those would go right underneath there. And this right here, those look like uh, um, ignition coil packs because there's no distributor. It's all computer controlled. That's how they do them front of the engine, the two engine halves, the heads, oil pan, and I got a couple other parts, pulleys and stuff to knock off of there. I'll do those in a minute. I'm going to get this all together and kind of detail painted and we'll see how it looks. Well, I have spent way more time than I wanted to, but I just really felt like doing some detail in this engine and, and paint detail that is. And I'm pretty glad I did because it was all the silver except this part here came from the black tree, the, the oil pan. But I just wanted to kind of pretty this engine up. I had to take a look at what these engines... I don't know much about these. <laughs> I haven't built modern NASCAR. I don't know these engines really well. But I uh, looked at some uh, reference material I've collected up and uh, kind of just got things going, you know, in close proximity of paint detail to really let this engine stand out. And quite honestly looks pretty freaking good when you throw a little paint on it. I just use a series of different metalizers. I painted the block. It's actually a flat gray. And and here, let's take a look at this. Let me get this so the camera will focus in onto this engine. Now just really the paint detail really comes a long way on this. I didn't really do much but just the the plates, basically the engine plates I painted um, like a, a, one of the dark metalizers, same with the front one. And right here you can see this is white because that's actually more like a part of the, the chassis that the plate is bolted to. But take a look at those um, pulleys and belts. The scale in them is really, really nice. I love how thin those are. So many model kits, you know, the, the belts are always so thick, look out of scale. And just a little paint detail really brings them up really nice. So I put a little brass right here in the centers of some of them just to bring some detail to the, uh, uh, and changing the contrast, just to liven it up a little bit. And then I took some Tamiya panel liner, the, the brown, the accent color. I just kind of dabbed around in some of the places. I also did that with the with the brown panel liner and just to kind of bring out that that hose system that goes under the under the uh, um, intake manifold just to add a little bit of detail to it. So that's where we went with the engine. But I have decided because of time, and I said I wasn't really going to get into doing too much of painting things. We are going to get started. Because all I've done, I've spent a long time on it trying to make that engine look good. And I'm, I'm glad I did. It really, really did enhance. That was all going to be just that silver. That Well, actually, I painted a lot of the stuff on there. The actual, like that is the silver right here. If you look at that. That's unpainted. And like that's unpainted right there. This was off the black tree and that's unpainted. But pretty much, I painted everything. The heads, the intake, the block, um, all those pulleys. It's all painted. And I, I, I'm glad I did. It really brings out the engine. But I'm going to step away from doing a lot of the detail painting. Because uh, because of time, we want to put this kit together and uh, see what it's like. That's what this is about. And I mean, if one wanted to just... Build it right out of the box, no paint. If you're like in your hotel room at the races, because these are these are getting sold at the racetrack, so that's kind of a part of the idea of it. Is uh, someone who's never built models, they're they're wanting to they're a Chase Elliott fan, and they see at the souvenir trailer this Chase Elliott kit. They buy it and they go to the hotel room, and build it one night. And we're gonna see if that can actually be done, and I think it can, but not if you're gonna be killing yourself doing all this really cool painting. <laughs> So we're going to move on to, there's part two, and i uh, going to start putting this all together. So let's get rocking with that. I'm going to kind of skip part two right now, which is just putting the wheels in the tires. I want to do something with that to, you know, do some livening up of the tires and the wheels. We'll get to that a little later. Let's get into taking care of getting the chassis rolling. I really, really, really love 
how Jim designed the um, all the the trees, all the sprue connections uh, off the trees onto the parts. They connect to everything very very small little section, which kind of has things falling off in the box. But that's what the box is for to catch all the parts that already fall off. But it's not peeling the plastic, ruining the plastic. You 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 doing okay? I'm just doing a little cleanup on all the spots that. It was connected at and it just it looks great this thing let's take a look at it this right here it's pretty straight yeah oh that's nice we got a nice straight one this is your platform this is your jig it even says in the instructions use under tray as the building jig to assemble partial cabin cage but do not glue it yet do not glue it yet all right i won't glue it yet Jeez. so we have the the bottom frame of the cage and everything that the floor will be attached to. This is actually the main frame of the car, which uh, it's on the silver tree, but this you probably, if you're detailing it, this is something you would paint white. This is basically, normally, uh, when we're talking about how the old cup cars were, this is your main frame, which is basically the center pod. Remember this, it has a series of plates that get bolted up. I'm not sure how they do it. They are either bolting them or they're Zeus fastening. I don't know. Don't know enough about these cars yet. I'm looking forward to learning. Looks like it fits like thus right there. So this would be white just like the rest of the chassis. So I would suggest painting that, but we're not going to. We're not worrying about that. We're going into the into the white plastic and let's see we need this right here this here this here and this here it looks like and there's a couple of bars let's see what do we got and there was some revisions there were some suggestions I want to show this this was added in later because what we're about to do this part really wasn't said they just kind of appear right there so this is kind of an update to help you know what these pieces are and where they go and when they go. And then there was just a suggestion. Oh, also, I guess in the instructions, if it was forgotten to put the rack and pinion. So that's cool. They caught that. As more kits come out, I know there's going to be a revision of the instructions and all that will be added in. But that's very cool that they threw that in there, helping us out. So now we're moving on to this part right here. You're watching the Lucas C channel on YouTube. Okay, so I got everything ready, and of course, I cannot put the brush down. I've got to do a little detail painting. Just got to add a little pizzazz to it, and I'm glad I did. Just a little bit of detail painting with metalizers and some Tamiya red. Um, just flat red, so dry quick. There's just a little block right there. I believe that's where the steering column comes through. The firewall, that's the firewall. So let's uh, put this thing together per the instructions and uh, you know I cleaned everything up let's see how it all fits together let's do a test fit here but this is basically what we're going to be doing so I am going to use to me an extra thin quick set because I am all about the quick set ding ding ding, ding. I love this stuff Kind of starts fusing the plastic pretty quick a hold in place but it's still a little movable which is, is something we like then we'll have to put the side panels bars and it's got that you know they're all kind of like a metal piece here and then they put foam up into those so i am going to just do a quick test fit here it's right along in there There's no slots that it goes into, so that just gets glued onto that, glued onto this base. I am just, this is pretty secure now, I am just going to put some glue right here on this part, part here with this quick set. Uh, I'm not sure yet exactly where the whole side will line up. We want to uh, get that all right when we get the to the firewall part so I just want to get that together real good this uh, quick set stuff works pretty fast I really love that stuff 
Thank you, Tamiya, for coming out with that. This is what I love to use. I've showed it before. This stuff is just spectacular. And let's see how this goes. There it is. Put it onto there. You know, I tell you, this is really cool how the model itself, this plate itself, kind of acts as a jig. Now, we got our number 27 and number 26. And these are these crossbars right here. That's why it's nice to not glue all that down yet. So I can find where they go. There we go. Now that fits in nice. This has a bit of a curve to it. So you want that curve to go to the top. So it definitely has, it's not a straight piece that you can just go in there anyway. So you got to make sure that you meet that curve correctly. Uh, that all fits pretty tight together. I like it. The tolerances are tight but it's it's really 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 good how everything fits together and stays together. This looks like I probably should have put this in first but then eh, that's not too bad. Going like that. Oh fits right in there. Look at that. just pops right into place so that's pretty helpful something I'm gonna do is it's pretty much setting up the way I want I'm gonna put a little glue down onto the frame where it's supposed to go it's looking pretty cool I like that How's this firewall fit into place? Just, oh, geez, just pops right in. That's nice. Okay, cool. You got these channels right here. I'm just going to put my glue over there. That all pops right into place real nice. And now you got your whole kind of your center pod there where your driver sits. And you can now take it off the plate there, and this is all glued together. I'm just going to glue a few joints that need to be kind of fitted down. And there we go. The center pod is all put together. Just need to put the, the rest of it all. That's your whole center section. And there you go, on the, on the plate and everything, or the whole bottom. Still not glued on yet. Pretty cool. I think at this point, you don't need this. You just needed to use this as your jig for putting your center pod together. Now that this is all glued together, everything else will build off of that. So you can put this away for now if you want to go ahead and do some detailing to it and whatnot. But this is all pretty, pretty solid. That really went together. That is really nice looking. That's really, really nice looking. I love that.